Welcome to Travel and Book. In this channel we upload short videos and audiobooks. You can enjoy audiobooks while traveling. So like and subscribe our channel. Summary The Rudest Book Ever by Shwetabite Gungavar. Lesson number 1, You Are a Nation. Shwetabite gives you a fascinating angle of seeing yourself as a nation. Don't think of yourself as a person. Think of yourself as a nation. Just as a nation has its constitution, you should also have a code to live your life by. When you start seeing yourself as a nation, the first thing that happens is that you take control of your life. You become the authority. You start to think for yourself and determine what's good for you and what isn't. When another person tries to attack you, you put your guard up. Just as a nation has its army to defend itself, you should also have your self-esteem or self-respect to hold yourself up and fight obstacles. Thinking of yourself as a nation doesn't mean you don't have to consider your relationship with other people. A nation prospers when it holds healthy relations with its neighbors. And it's the same with you. Just as a nation can't control other countries, you can't control other people. The only thing you can control is yourself. Suggested read, what you think of me is none of my business, book summary. Lesson number two, parents aren't experts. Parents with children. Now, this may sound rude to some people. And yes, it is rude but true. Our parents don't know everything. We believe that our parents are some specially designed creatures tailored just for us and they have a solution to all our problems. Well, the truth is that they aren't geniuses, and they don't have a solution to every puzzle in our lives. Parents are people too, just like you. And people are weird, says Shwetabite. What do you think about people? Can you even define people? Everyone has his way of defining people, which also depends on their experiences. To some people, people are confusing. While to some, people are complicated and shitty. Shwetabite calls people weird as it doesn't define people in extremes. Judging people in extremes is not a good idea. For example, a person can be both good and bad. It just depends on the circumstances. Instead of labeling people, we should embrace the idea that people are weird and be content with that. I highly recommend you to read You Are a Not So Smart Summary. It will help you learn about various psychological biases. After reading this, you'll know how human beings are prone to make silly errors more often than we think. Lesson number 3, Specialness is Earned. Somewhere deep down in our hearts, we all want to feel special. But what does feeling special mean to you? Do you want to get the recognition of other people? Does getting approval from other people that you are a special matter to you? Do you even need to feel special in the first place? Let's say your colleagues or friends think that you are unique. Even your parents have told you that you are unique. So do you become special when others say so? The straight answer is no. People aren't qualified enough to decide whether someone is special or not. Shwetabite says that specialness is something you earn. And for that, you must ask yourself if you are unique or not by closing your eyes. Yourself will give you the correct answer. Ask yourself. If you need somebody else to tell you that you are special, then you have not done anything to earn it. Shwetabite Gungavar Lesson number 4, First Impressions Can Be Delusional 
we love judging people being humans. Whenever we meet someone for the first time, our mind gives a rating to them and decides whether they are better than us or not. But that's the wrong way of judging someone. When you judge someone for the first time, you don't have any real life data about them. Most of the judgment is based on their outer appearance, how they present themselves in front of others, or what others say about them. The caveat here is that everyone tries to market themselves as someone they are not. You never know, unless you are wise, when you are being sold a bullshit idea. That is why relying on first impressions is a shitty way of making judgments. The best way is to look at their actions and wait until you gather enough real life data. Making assumptions without the right data will never give you an accurate analysis of a person. Lesson number 5, Rejections are normal. Rejection. This world is a jungle where all humans compete for their survival. You will be rejected at some point in your life. Here is the thing with rejection, it makes you doubt yourself. When you get rejected, your self-esteem takes a big kick from behind. And these questions start creeping into your mind. Do I lack something? Why am I like this? What is wrong with me? It's also possible that you will get motivated after being rejected. Now, I will show you what I'm capable of. You will regret rejecting me after some time. Do these sentences sound familiar? Getting motivated by rejection is also a bad idea. So how do we deal with it? You need to realize that rejections have nothing to do with you. Rejections don't mean anything and shouldn't bother you at all. This sounds so simple, doesn't it? It is you who has to decide your self-worth. Nobody knows you more than you. Getting depressed or motivated by rejection only means that you are desperate for another person's approval, which you definitely shouldn't be. Rejection from people should mean jack shit to you. Shwetabite Gungavar Lesson number 6, Stop Chasing Happiness A boy chasing happiness. What's your ultimate goal in life? I know it's super hard to answer. But if you believe that the ultimate goal of life is to attain happiness, then you might get into a bit of trouble. There is a flaw in chasing happiness, you never stop chasing those things that make you happy or give you immense joy. Once you get something pleasurable, you crave more. Happiness doesn't last for eternity. Therefore, one should always strive for self-satisfaction. You have to say, F asterisk CK happiness. I don't want to be happy, I want to be satisfied in life. I want self-satisfaction. Shwetabite Gungavar Lesson number 7, Know Yourself Know Yourself You might have noticed the word self for quite a time now. So what is it? Why do you even need to know yourself? According to this book, the self is the individual in you. Yourself is the silent voice in your head that you try to avoid all the time. Instead of getting away from yourself, you should embrace it. The common problem with people is that they depend on others to grade them. Instead of making their self the authority, they make others the authority who don't have a f asterisking clue about them. That way, they lose their confidence in themselves, and in the worst case, they lose their identity. And in their dumb effort to please people, they waste their precious time. You must try to know as much as you can about yourself. Knowledge of self will also help you in learning how to think. More on this below. You might also like. 
9 reasons you are important than you think. Lesson number 8, quit following. Start admiring. Quit following. If you have read any fiction books or watched any fictional movie, which you probably have, you know that heroes always win in the end, no matter what the story is. As villains are sinister and always lose, nobody loves them. People love those who win and are followed by others. It's good to admire your heroes. So what's the point here? The problem starts when you start blindly following your heroes. Some people even start copying them. They do precisely what their idols say or do. It's not a good idea to put heroes on a pedestal. There are no heroes and villains in the real world. Heroes and villains exist only in fiction. In the real world, there are only people. And as Shwetabite says, people are weird. Therefore, admire people and learn from them. But don't become someone's blind follower. Lesson number 9, perfection only exists online. Perfect images online. In real life, people aren't perfect. People have so many flaws that even they aren't aware of. But when it comes to online, they are nothing but perfect human beings. Perfection sells well online. And when you see those perfect figures or people online, you realize that you lack something they don't, which causes self-doubt. After that, you see hope. And then starts a dream of achieving a fancy glamorous success as they have. You might ask, what's wrong with that? The thing is, you don't have any real life data about them. Put simply, you have no f asterisking idea what they are like in real life. Getting online and posting perfect shots on Instagram doesn't make you a genius. Also, blindly following someone on social media is utter foolishness. When you foolishly try to become like a celebrity, you lose your individuality. Remember that if something looks perfect online, it has gone through so many edits by professionals who are good at their game. Lesson number 10, a relationship is a partnership. Relationship. The whole point of a relationship is to complement each other's life. But some people think that they would become happier if they went into a relationship. Remember that. It is you who should have the authority to make you happy or self-satisfied. The source of happiness must never be the other person. That's why going into a relationship just to get happier is a terrible idea, says Shwetabite. Others don't dare to f asterisk ck with your nation if you have a strong leader. And when they do, the leader knows how to take care of you. Shwetabite Gungavar. Lesson number 11, you must learn how to think. A boy thinking about something. From the moment you are born, you are taught what to think. You might ask, why doesn't anyone teach us how to think? Even after they become adults, some even after crossing the 50s, don't learn how to think. There are very few people on earth who can think something different than what they already know. And since people, in general, are never taught how to think, you never get to learn how to think. What to think is basically all the information fed into your brain. Once you learn how to think, you'll be able to break the programming in your head and think original. One way to learn how to think is to solve your problems yourself. What do you do when you encounter a puzzling situation? Well, these days, we have Google, and it knows everything. So you go to google.com and search for the solution to your problem. 
you never really do the brainstorming part. You accept whatever solution the internet offers to you. In short, you hardly practice thinking. The surprising thing is people don't really care about thinking. The general idea is that the more you know, the better. This isn't true at all. Also, only a tiny percentage of people would be able to tell you the difference between knowledge and intelligence. Especially when artificial intelligence is on the rise, few people put effort into learning how to think. How do you expect to learn how to think when you hardly ever practice thinking? Shwetabite Gungavar